Let us look at the last question of the day. All right, so once again, they've given us a photo cell and they say that there's a sensitive ammeter showing a reading, so the ammeter is picking up a reading. All right, and once again there they've shown the cell. All right, so it says, how does the energy of the photons of the incident light compare to the work function of the metal plate? Now remember, we need to make sure that that incoming light, so the photons are part of the incoming light, the energy of this incoming light, the frequency of that light, so it's always monochromatic light, I might add. So monochromatic means uh, light of a single color, light of a single frequency. So this incoming light has to have a frequency greater than the threshold fu uh, function of the metal, otherwise electrons will not be emitted. So the frequency of the incoming light has to be bigger than the threshold frequency. All right, so if we have a look at the question again, it says, how does the energy of the photons compare? So we know that the incoming light, the frequency, must be greater than the threshold frequency. So in other words, we know that energy of the uh, incoming light is equal to HF, and we know that the work function of the metal, so remember, this is the energy of the photons that are striking the metal plate, and W naught is equal to HF naught and this is the work function of the metal. So because the frequency of the incoming light must be bigger than the threshold frequency, it means that the energy of the incoming light must be bigger than W naught in order for there to be a reading on the ammeter. All right, so the incoming light must have an energy greater than the threshold frequency in order to um, have electrons being emitted. Okay, it says a change is made to the monochromatic light. All right, so monochromatic means light, we said, of a single frequency or a single color. All right, monochromatic. So don't forget that they sometimes ask you that definition, so remember that definition. So they say a change is made to the monochromatic light. The reading on the ammeter increases. So the current, in other words, in the circuit is increasing. If the current is increasing, it means more electrons are being released. All right, so that is what they are telling us with this. A learner makes the following statement. He says, that, or she says, the increase in the ammeter reading is due to an increase in the energy of the incident photons. Give a reason why it's incorrect. All right, so we've made reference to this earlier on. So we said that your energy of the incoming light has to have a certain frequency. If this frequency is greater than the threshold frequency, electrons will be emitted. So that is implying that the energy of the incoming electrons must be greater than the work function. All right, otherwise these electrons won't be emitted. But now these electrons, when they are being emitted at that specific frequency, will have a constant kinetic energy. But now the learner is saying the increase in the ammeter reading is due to an increase in the energy of the incident photons. Now this is incorrect, because we said that what determines the number of electrons released, it is the intensity of the incoming light. So in other words, if I could try and explain it like this, is maybe intensity. You could be looking at, say for argument's sake, a 60 watt light bulb versus a 100 watt light bulb. So if I've got a light bulb, it's got a certain frequency. So if it's white light, it's white light. Whether we are working with a 60 watt or a 100 watt, it's still white light. We haven't changed the frequency. All right, all that happens with the change in the power is I've got more photons striking the surface. So the number of photons per second striking the surface is greater. Therefore, I'm going to have a greater current. All right, energy has nothing to do with it. Energy is to do with the frequency. So if I'm working with white light and white light can emit photons or, or photoelectrons, awesome. All right, but if I see that UV light, the frequency is too low, it doesn't matter what 
um, intensity I use, it still won't emit electrons. Okay, so here the problem is, is that your number of photon, photoelectrons being emitted is determined by the intensity of the incoming light. All right, let us look at the next question. What is the photoelectric effect tell us about the nature of light? So if we have a look at the nature of light, so we know that light can act as a wave and light can act as a particle. So it's called the dual nature of light. So here the answer would be that light can also be a particle. Why do we say that light can be a wave? Well, we've learned in other grades or in our lower grades that light can act as a wave because it can undergo diffraction, it can undergo constructive interference, destructive interference, etc. And those are all properties of waves. So here light is acting as a particle and that is why we have the dual nature of light because it can act as a particle or it can act as a wave. All right, next question. Ultraviolet radiation is incident on the surface of the sodium metal. The threshold frequency for sodium is 5,73 times 10 to the 14 hertz. The maximum speed of an electron emitted from the metal is 4,19 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. All right, so let us have a look at what they've given me. So with this question, they're wanting work function. So we know that W naught equals H times F naught. And I see here they've given me the threshold frequency for sodium. And there it is. So the W naught for sodium is going to equal Planck's constant. So we've used that a few times today. And there it is. Multiplied by the threshold frequency. So that's 5,73 times 10 to the 14. Okay, and that is equal to, so get out our faithful calculator, and so we go 6.63 exponent minus 34 multiplied by 5.73 exponent 14. And there we go. So the answer, the work function, is equal to 3,79899. I suppose we could run it off to 3,80 is equal to 3,80 times 10 to the minus 19 joule. Okay, so nice easy three marks and so nothing too hectic. We write down the equation, we substitute into it and then we calculate. And don't forget your units. Do you know how often we forget to put our units in and then we lose the mark for the final answer. So please, 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 units, units, units. All right. And remember, work is a scalar quantity, so there's no direction. All right, but always remember to look for units and direction if you're working with vector quantities as well. Okay, but here, just your units and work is measured in joule. Let's look at the last question. All right, yeah, they want us to work out the frequency of the incident photon. All right, so what do we know? So we've got E is equal to W naught plus EK. All right, we can expand this. So we've got E is equal to W naught plus a half M V squared. All right, so we, they gave us the velocity. So energy is equal to, so they're wanting the frequency of the incoming light. So remember, this is the energy of the incoming light. So that is equal to HF is equal to the work function, which we calculated in the previous question, plus a half. The mass of an electron is given to you on the information sheet. Uh, I must just take that out here. All right. And that is given to you as 9,11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So remember in physics we always work with mass in kilograms multiplied by the velocity and I forgot what the speed was that they gave us. Okay, so they told us it's being emitted with a speed of 4,19 times 10 to the 5. So we go 4,19 times 10 to the 5 and don't forget your square. 
Do you know how often that happens, that we write down the equation correctly and when we sub in, we just tend to forget that square and that will change your answer completely. So don't forget the square. All right, so always double check that you've done it properly and that you don't lose unnecessary marks. All right, so let's carry on with that quickly. So I just want to extend the page here. All right, so let me just get rid of this. All right, so H is playing as constant, 6 comma 6, 3, times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the frequency, and is equal to the work function, which we worked out, and I think it was 3 comma 8. You can just double check me, times 10 to the minus 19, plus a half times 9 comma 1, 1, times 10 to the minus 31, times 4 comma 1, 9, oh gosh, all right, 4 comma 1, 9, times 10 to the 5, all squared, all right, so let us work it out, so 6 comma 6, 3, times 10 to the minus 34, all right, so now we need our faithful calculator, so let us just clear that. So we're going to have 4.19, sorry, let's start again, 4.19 exponent 5 multiplied by 4.19 exponent 5 is equal to that, all right? Multiplied by the mass 9.11 exponent minus 31. And there we go. And now we don't forget we need to divide by 2, divided by 2. Two. And so we have got 7, 99. Let's make that 8 times 10 to the minus 20. So just to make it easier, so it's 3, 8 times 10 to the minus 19 plus 3, 8 times 10 to the minus 20. All right. So now we need to add. So, sorry, that was, gosh, I wrote it down incorrectly. This was. 7 comma 9, 9, I'll change that now, plus 3.8 exponent minus 19 is equal to, all right, so this is going to be equal to 4 comma, let's make it 4 comma 6, times 10 to the minus 19, so let's just erase this one quickly, okay, so I wrote that down incorrectly, so it was about 7 comma, 9, 9. All right, and so here we've got 6, 6, 3 times 10 to the minus 34. And now we solve for f. So f is equal to 4, 6 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by Planck's constant. And we need our calculator again. So it's that value divided by Planck's constant. And it's equal to 6, 6,94, 6,94 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now don't forget your units, all right? So remember, frequency is measured in hertz. 